Good morning, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here at the Rutenberg Library. Come to you this uh, this morning, this beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. The wind has finally uh, died down outside, so it's not nearly as cold as it's been. Uh, sun's out, blue skies. It's absolutely gorgeous day. Uh, just got done taking the dog out, and uh, so here I am getting ready to give you a book review. Uh, I wanted to review the book, The Return of George Washington, 1783 to 1789 by Edward J. Larson. And here's the book. Uh, this was a great book. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's a book that I probably will have to come back and do a reread at some point in the future just because, you know, with the uncertainty of everything that's going on in life right at the moment, um, I will admit a lot of the reading of this book, I, I was a little foggy brained and maybe didn't enjoy it as much as I should have enjoyed it because as soon as, as soon as I got some things lined out for school and, and got things all ready and you know, that feeling of stress going away, as soon as that happened, the fogginess le uh, lifted and the last part of this book was absolutely great. And, um, I'm, I'm wondering if I missed out on some of it in the beginning just because of, of uh, you know, stress with work and everything. So um, anyway, this is a great book. It's by Edward J. Larson. Uh, Edward J. Larson is, let's see, he works at Pepperdine University according to the back, uh, back cover. He um, has won the Pulitzer Prize for History and Summer for the Gods, the Scopes Trial, and America's Continuing Debate over Science and Religion. Uh, of course, he wrote this book and uh, a couple others. He's got a new one out that I saw on the shelves at, uh, where did I see that? I saw that at Sam's Club, actually, and it's a, it's a biography on Washington and Franklin and their role in uh, getting our nation going, and I, I actually look, uh, look forward to getting that one. I'd like to, I'd like to see what, uh, what he has to say about that. Uh, so to show you a little bit about this book before I talk about it. It's got beautiful, beautiful, uh, illustrations here on the end pages. There's one of Mount Vernon overlooking the Potomac River, um, with the family on the front porch. And then the back cover is of course the triumphant entry as he becomes, uh, president and uh, I just think the the end the end pages here are absolutely beautiful they were they were great to look at every time I opened the book I just sat and admired them but uh, any anyway, oh and well, on the front cover itself you notice Mount Vernon here and here's George Washington almost like he's godlike in the in the clouds overlooking everything and and uh, you know the back covers kind of the same, pretty much the same scene. But uh, anyway, beautiful book. It's got, uh, show you some of the pictures in the middle. Just some iconic photos from the time period. Uh, oh, if I can get the pages to turn here. All right, there's the president, or, or I guess general at that point, and, and Martha, famous, uh, picture of the family. We've got some Mount Vernon, Robert Morris, Elizabeth Powell, uh, of course, a lot of close friends. So it's got lots of illustrations. I won't show you all of them, but, but lots of illustrations in the middle. Uh, if you look at the, the print in the book, the, the size of the text is, is, uh, good for the, for the reading eye. It's got nice spacing. So, uh, as you're as you're reading this, you don't feel like you're getting bogged down in everything or in anything. It's a very a pretty fast read. As I said, I need to come back and read it again later uh, when I'm less stressed because I think I would actually read through it a lot faster than I did. Um, but the book, it's like I said, very very good book. Uh, they break he breaks them chapters up into short little sections. You'll notice you know, it breaks in the reading when he changes subjects within the chapter. Uh, usually it's a, a, you know, two, three pages and then there's a break. Some of them are just one page or half a page. Um, easy reading. It takes in chapter one, it takes uh, him retiring from being general. He, uh, of course, gives up power, which is absolutely amazing to all the European countries. And this, that sets up his... Um, Oh, 
his legacy, really. You know, he wasn't after power, according to uh, pretty much every uh, every author that's ever uh, written about him. Uh, and then in the second chapter, he goes into a lot of this covers Shay's rebellion and the impact that that had on the psyche of the uh, United States. And uh, and should, do we need a more powerful federal government? And of course, Washington, being a, a federalist, he of course wanted that. He had saw uh, seen the uh, the detriment to the country, you know, as general when you didn't have enough power to do anything. And uh, he he thoroughly he, he felt that the United States thoroughly needed a uh, powerful federal government. And of course, then as the in the the next chapter, then it starts talking about uh, all of the powers that be starting to meet and decide, you know, do we do we get, uh, fix this thing or not? And then when they get together, who's going to lead it? And of course, George Washington's name comes up as the number one guy to lead the whole thing. And one of the big things that I found in this book that was maybe a little different than other books, a lot of biographies will paint George Washington. When he was done, he wanted to go home and be a farmer. He didn't want to be in power. You know, he's kind of standoffish and everything. And Edward J. Larson, I think he agrees with that a little bit, but only to an extent, because he really paints Washington as kind of the hub of all of the changes that need to be made. He, he really makes it look like that all of the letter writing and everything going back and forth between Madison and Jay and Hamilton and, and uh, a lot of the other guys that were the, the founders, everything's going back and forth with Washington. Do you agree with this? And I think Larson actually paints Washington as a little bit more, I hesitate to say academic, when it comes to the stuff that's going on in the nation, but he tends to paint Washington as knowing maybe a little bit more than he did. Um, pretty much every other author says that his name was used more than anything. You know, he he keeps up to date on everything, but but he's not the the guy who comes up with the ideas. And and Larson kind of paints him as more of the uh, I wouldn't say the guy that comes up with the ideas but really pushes them and he's out front with it a little bit more than what he what he was and so I found that to be a little different than what I normally normally see in Washington uh, biographies he definitely says that Washington is the man without Washington nothing happens matter of fact let me let me read I wrote it down here let me read one of the last in the in the epilogue what Larson says he says Washington was an indispensable was as indispensable to America during these middle years as before or after them. During that pivotal phase of the country's development, he laid the foundation for the Constitution, the government, and the sacred union of states and people that has lasted us for more than 225 years and promises to continue long into the future. So definitely in his epilogue, Larson uh, you know, his his thesis of the whole book is everything revolves around Washington. Washington is the guy that made it all work. And I, I definitely agree with him on that. Uh, but uh, the middle of the book talks about the the whole process of putting the, the Constitutional Convention together and coming up with the arguments uh, for it. Uh, he, he really centers in on the, the biggest change is the executive branch. He really pushes the executive branch in this book and how that's the one that, that needed to happen because, of course, the articles definitely lacked in that respect. And so um, he says that that was the hardest thing for everybody to agree to was should there be an executive and how strong should it be. And so there's, there's a lot written in this book about that. And then, of course, the latter part of the book is on... Um, getting the thing, getting the Constitution passed, and once it's passed, everybody knows who the leader's going to be. That's going to be George Washington, uh, and it's unanimous. And there were really very few speed bumps in making sure that he was unanimously elected as the president. And so, so anyway, um, love the book. I, I need to reread it. And I might even, I'm going to give it a four. I would highly recommend anybody reading uh, that time period between the Revolution and the Constitution. This is a book you should pick up. I'd give it a four. Uh, going to reread it sometime in the future. And uh, maybe I can get a different take on it. But uh, I hope this, this book review helped you out and you're, you're 
looking for more books to read on this time period, I'd recommend it. Uh, this has been Rutenberg's Reviews, and I am Bill Rutenberg. And BookTube, you have a great day, and happy reading.